Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have our very special guest today. We have our po podcast uh, community leader, and she is here, Debbie Adams, and she's doing another podcast with us. She has her own podcast on The Advisor, and today she wants to talk about words and the meaningful way of how we use words and how it could affect us. And she wants to be able to show people, you know, that, you know, what we say really affects not just other people around us, but it affects our legacy and it affects the people who look at us as mentors. And she has some special messages that she wants to share today. So Debbie, tell everybody a little about the message that you feel that God's speaking to you today and you want to share with the rest of the world. Thank you, Stacy. I feel like there is so much hate, um, so much controversy in the world that we live in. When I was growing up, it never was as bad. I'm sure it was bad back then, but it is was never as bad as I think it is now. And I think it's because people just say whatever they want to say they don't they don't seem to care if that's going to hurt somebody or if that's you know not the words that they need to say um growing up my dad always said think before you speak and I still do that to this day and like my book that um was launched back in February you know, I talk about the pure heart. And if you have a pure heart, you're going to watch the words you say. You're going to watch how you say them and pay attention to people that are around you. And even going to church, I mean, the little kids, they watch yeah. the people that come to church. They watch the people, you know, how they react. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's, I mean, even, even though you go to church, I mean, you're still, sometimes you still have controversy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've seen those. Yeah. And, um, but, uh, you know, just be aware of your testimony and your life and what kind of, when you're gone from this earth, what is, what are people going to say about you? that they were kind and they spoke gently or are they going to say, oh, she spoke whatever she thought and didn't right. care, you know. And so that's my main message today is just to be thinking, like my dad said, just think before you speak. That's that's the main message I want to leave today. I think it's so important that people really stop and think what they say. I think there's a lack of respect in our society. Like people just think that they have um, the right to say whatever they please. And, and, oh, yes, we do live in a free country, but you have to also think about what you're saying and how is that going to affect the other person? You know, so mm -hmm. many times, if you look at social media, there are lots of teenagers that were bullied, you know, through social media, just saying people saying harmful things and e-blasting them to all these different people that that person knew. And then, you know, you also heard about people taking taking their lives because, mm -hmm. you know, because they just felt so bullied and they're, and they just, you know, it's for them, you know, it was something major, you know, for other people, maybe not so, but it all depends who you're talking to. Everybody has it, their own personality. Everybody takes things differently. Everybody has a different layer of skin. You know, some people can mm -hmm. handle more than others, you know, when it, when it comes to people saying you know, constructive criticism or saying just some, something that just shoots out of their mouth. But not everybody's as good as doing that as other people. And you, when we say hurtful things, you know, what is the purpose? What is the purpose of saying something harmful or hatred towards other people? What benefit are you getting? Is it making mm -hmm. you feel good? You know, and if it is, why is it making you feel good? Ask yourself that question because it shouldn't. You know, we all we all are here to be happy, healthy, productive people, and we all should be here. You know, God put us on this earth to to love and honor each other. And what type of love and honor are you showing each other? 
when you, you know, are throwing hatred remarks to other people, you know, and, and that can affect somebody. I, I know people that are all grown up, they still revert back to their childhood at <laughs> six years old, you know, someone so mm -hmm. to me. So obviously, it, you know, saying mean things and, 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 and showing hateful actress, acts really do play a, a really traumatic role in people's lives more than people realize. It's not something, you know, you might say something and then you don't even think about it twice, but to the person that, that is receiving that message that could stay with somebody their whole life, depending on what type of personality they are. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Because I mean, growing up, I was the shy kid at school, you know, and it seemed like people would try to pick on me, but even though I was shy, I mean, you know, I had a lot of confidence in myself, so I didn't let that bother me. Right. And, you know, now I don't have a problem talking. <laughs> <you know? laughs> um, and, but for those that, whether they're kids or whether they're adults, and you can say something to either change a person's day or make a person's day. I mean, you can go through the grocery lane and the person that's checking you out, she might look like she's all grumpy or yeah. she or he. And all you got to do is, you know, talk to them nice, you know, and just say, hi, how are you? Are you having a good day today? Yeah or talk about the weather or something. And that might be all that person needs to make their day. And that's why this topic is so important because I don't think people nowadays, I don't think they think about anyone. Well, some people do, but a lot of people don't think about anyone but themselves. Yeah. It's like, Great. what? What do I want? What can I get in this world? Let's knock this person down so yeah. I can look bigger. And, you know, I don't, I don't agree with that mentality. And God definitely doesn't agree with that mentality. Yeah. And because, you know, in his word, he said to love others as I have loved you. Yes. And God created us to love like he loves mm -hmm. and if we're not treating others right if we're not using the right words and just like you talked about earlier just spoke whatever you know comes out of your mouth not thinking right. about it I mean that's not very loving at all and just the way our country is right now I mean it's you know this president going against this president you know iran ukraine and i too many to name but um yep. you get, yeah you get the point mm -hmm. but you know even even whether it's people or whether it's countries going against each other we all need to come together and be a loving generation of people and when we leave this earth, let us be known as the generation that truly loved each other, that truly helped each other. And, you know, when you have a tornado or um, like um, Louisiana, I can't remember how many years ago, the Katrina. Yep, when yep, everybody, yep. Yeah, everybody just jumped in and helped. Mm -hmm. And nowadays, if people do that, it's a small fraction of people that will do that. Yeah. And that's that's why I want to talk about this message today, because I want people to think. And if a, maybe a small fraction of our world can start getting back to that, maybe we can get the rest of them, you know, right. to think before they speak and you know, like my book said, you know, have a pure heart. Yes. And if we keep our heart pure and, you know, think about what words we are saying mm -hmm. and, you know, we, 
we could find more happiness in our life in the world around us. Yes. And, you know, we then we've had probably in the past. Oh, yeah. You know, I agree 100 percent. I feel like, you know, today's world really, you know, there's so many people against each other and people don't come out of the woodworks as much as they used to, you know, and, and mm -hmm. it shouldn't take a crisis for people to come out of the woodworks, you know, you know, people should be like that all the time, you know, and mm -hmm. you don't see that, you know, people come out of the woodworks when, you know, when, you know, the crisis is at its worst, you know. And we should always be there for each other. We should always have a handout for each other. And you don't see that as much as we did when we were growing up. You know, when we mm -hmm. were growing up, it was, you know, people, you know, lent a help and handout, you know, and, and people care more. And, you know, and, and you know, you didn't really hear so many people saying so many terrible things like they do today. And they just voice it and they voice it on social media and they don't care. And, you know, I think I think our society, you know, people are lacking respect for one another and we mm -hmm. need to respect each other. And we need to, you know, no matter if you like the person or not, you still should respect them for who they are. You don't have to like them, you know, mm -hmm. you know, but respect them, you know, and you don't have to, you know, you know, throw out hate. You know, hatred more remarks or or be mean to them you know you just stay your distance you know if you don't mm -hmm. particularly care for somebody but there's no reason to show to to share hate hatred words and and to and to be mean to somebody you know so, you know we you know i think it's over 70 percent of the of, of the united states alone has dysfunctional families you know and mm -hmm. that's really it, it's sad when you think about that and and a lot of times people repeat the behaviors they see in their environment you know it's mm -hmm. time to really look at ourselves and, and and look at the way we're acting and and then look at you know look at mentors you were talking before about you know we want to leave a good legacy well let's look at those people who have left a good legacy and let's say or do I have some of those qualities that that person is, is carrying There's, you know, that person wa was a giver. That person had always something nice to say, do I do that? You know, and, you know, and a lot of times it's a reflection of how we feel inside. So if we are mean and we are, are, are rude individuals who like to put people down, it's usually because we don't feel very good about ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yes. That I agree with that 100% because if you don't love yourself, I have learned this over the years with, you know, di just different life experiences going, you know, growing up, whatever. But if you do not love yourself, how can you love a stranger? Yeah. How can you love, you know, your family like you should? And right. I mean, I've, I've had got family members, you know, in the past that they've been fighting. And, you know, that to me, that's not right. I mean, whether it's your family or a stranger, but in order for you to help a stranger, like I've talked before about how I love helping people. And if I see somebody struggling, if they're trying to, um, like in our neighborhood, if I see somebody, you know, that's um, trying to like pull their trash can out, you know, for the week or pull it in or whatever. If they're struggling, if they're older, you know, it's like, I'll go, you know, oh, let me help you with that. Right. Or, or just holding the door for an, an older person when you go to the grocery store or any right. store. And, but how can you show them love in helping them? Yeah. If you don't have the love in your heart yourself exactly and get like my book um straighten your crown it taught i talk about you have to go deep within yourself you yeah. have to find out what is in yourself that is causing you know all this hatred towards yourself you might not they might not even realize that they have hatred but like you mentioned earlier, if they grew up, say, in a bad childhood, you know, it usually, you know, keeps going generation after generation, whatever right. it was. Mm -hmm. And if that's the case, then they need to break 
out of that. And the only way to break out of that is to reach deep down into your heart, into your soul, and look at everything that happened, um, mm -hmm. you know, and you might say, oh, there's nothing, you know, in my past. But if you're not being loving, if you're being hateful and vindictive, there's something there. Exactly. And it, you know, and it's also a mindset because if you get your mind set on mm -hmm. this is the way that I'm going to do things, I'm not going to change, then, you know, you can't change that person either. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And I, I think people really have to start being honest with themselves too, and really look at it themselves. You know, I think so many mm -hmm. people sometimes are, you know, they don't want to accept who they are. They don't want, they're in denial. They're, you know, they, mm -hmm. they, you know, they have issues, they have problems and, and they don't like who they are as a person, but they're not doing anything about it to change it. You know, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, I think, um, you know, there has to be more people, you know, voicing the word and, and, and talking about more about respect and, and about thinking it before you're talking and about, you know, how, you know, love and peace are so important and, and, and being able to help others is so important. And that, you know, when it, when it comes to all this craziness and all this hatred and all this anger towards each other that you see on TV all the time, you know, people bashing people, you know, it never gets you anywhere. And, you know, mm -hmm. you could, you could go back all the way to BC and, and, you know, mm -hmm. you could see, you could, you could look back all the way into history and hatred and anger and war, all these things never got anywhere, any, any, anything, nothing ever progressed. Things mm -hmm. just got worse, you know, or they calmed down and then they started up again, but you know, nothing ever got better, you know? So what's the point? What's mm -hmm. the point? you know, and why hurt another human being, you know, you know, you wouldn't want someone hurting you. So why would you want to hurt someone? Yes, exactly. I mean, you see it on the news all the time, you know, I mean, whether it's, you know, some political leaders or supposedly political leaders, mm -hmm. and I don't see how they could politically lead anything if they're not showing the right example. But my my point is, if you do not know how to show respect, if you do not know how to love yourself in order to love others, it's not just in your family, in your personal relationships. Right. It's into other relationships, you know, even even strangers. I mean, you might be the CEO of a company right. and, you know, it goes, it goes as far, it goes there as well. And because I've worked for companies before, you know, and the manager and I'm thinking, Oh, you just really don't love your employees the way you're acting. And, but I, you know, I never said anything, you know, because I was an employee. I just, you know, you just do what you got to do. You just do your job and go home for the day. Yeah. And but in if people in order for people to in order for let me put it another way, in order for this country to turn around and get away from all of this hatred and controversy and fighting and like you talked about wars. I mean, there's been wars since this country started i mean our grandparents great grandparents all many generations ago and until we get to where we want to be more loving more compassionate to others mm -hmm. around the world in our family whatever nothing is going to change right and that's that's why I, this message is so important because people are not turning to God. And I think that has a lot to do with why this generation is so much me, me, me. And when it should be the other person, not them. Why do you think then the younger generation, a lot of them had lost their faith 
in, in God where they're, they're not going to church as much or they're not being as strong as in faith as they were in previous generations? That puzzles me because I have a brother that is six years younger than me. And, you know, he has two kids, my niece and nephew. And, you know, we went to church every time the doors were open growing up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, you, you've heard the phrase, I was drugged to church. Mm -hmm. And, but, you know, I still go, but he might be, since he's six years younger than me and, you know, and even people younger than him, they might have felt like they were drugged to church and they didn't like it. And so they're, when they get adults, they're not going to go to church. Right. But I think it is so many influences of the world. Yeah. That they find it hard sometimes to decide what is the right thing what is the correct thing to do right it, you know like the peer pressure you know that uh kids find today in school um i mean you know they they might be a good kid they might not ever you know drink or do drugs or whatever but uh to give them enough peer pressure and enough kids on them you know and they will go, you know, find them a cigarette or something and go smoke behind the building. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they might not have ever done that, you know, right. before. So it, I think it's your priorities. Right. If your priority is focused on God, focused on the eternal one, and you will, you know, still go to church. I mean, you'll have bad things happen in your life. I mean, we all do. Mm -hmm. But I think if you set your priorities right and, may, and you know, tell yourself that, no, I'm not going to let this interfere with what I want, you know, in my life and mm -hmm. what I want in my future. Right. No, I, I agree. I think, um, I think people have to really just focus on, um, priorities, like what's really important, you know, you know, what type of mentor am I being? What kind of example am I to my community? What kind of example mm -hmm. am I to my family? What kind of example am I, you know, to the people around me and really start to think about, you know, how it affects other people in my life, you know, mm -hmm. and, and then really, you know, take an honest look. And I think that's the key is being honest because most people don't, aren't honest with themselves, you know, and the only way to, to move forward in life and, and to better this world is to be honest with yourself and to, and to admit that, you know, no human being is perfect. We all have flaws. We all have, you know, things that could be done, you know, tweaked up and, and done a little better, mm -hmm. you know, but when it comes to, you know, be working on ourselves. I think all of us could work on ourselves each day to make ourselves better. And also we have to, you know, learn how to treat others. And, and if we're upset and we had a bad day, let's not take it out on somebody else. Let's learn different, you know, different ways of, of coping with stress in this life and, and not take it out on other people and not be so hateful. And there's things in my life that I don't like about myself that makes me feel horrible as a person. Well, then I, I need to figure out ways to make that better and make mm -hmm. it. And, and, and so I, I don't, you know, so I don't, you know, take out, you know, you know, my anger and my, my frustrations and, and everything I'm going through in life and, and take it out on others and you, and not to repeat the behaviors too, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of times, you know, people have to hit rock bottom before they realize, you know, and lose the things they love the most before they realize, you know, that they're, they're not headed in a good direction and their behaviors aren't headed in a good direction. But, you know, I think people have to be open minded and really understand life and understand people and and be respectful. You know, I always think before I talk and I always try to be respectful to everybody. And like we said before, you don't have to like everybody, but be respectful to them. Mm -hmm. That's it. Exactly. That is that is it in a nutshell, <laughs> as my dad you know, always said. <laughs> but but yeah, if you I mean, like you said, if you don't like yourself, I mean, that's the number one problem right there. 
And you have to get to that point. I mean, you might even have to hit rock bottom. You might have to, you know, lose your car, lose your house, you know, lose your family, whatever, until you come to the realization that, you know, maybe you turned away from God and, you know, you will call back out to him and he will raise you back up. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we all need to look at ourselves every day, look at what we do, how we do things. And, you know, even me on my job, it, you know, sometimes, you know, I think we get in a rut. We do, we know our job, we do it, you know, er, every day. But then it's our lives are the same way. Yeah. But exact, like you would do a job, like if a new employee had come in trying to do your job and they would say, oh, you could do this better by doing it this way. Mm -hmm. And we need to look at our lives the same way. Right. We need to examine and maybe ask other people, you know, is, you know, say maybe, you know, something is bothering you about a certain area in your life mm -hmm. and you don't know how to fix it. Yes. And ask a friend or ask if you, if they go to church, ask their pastor, you know, Hey, you know, I want to fix this area in my life and to make it better. And how can I do this? Right. And then get that fixed. And then, you know, you will feel all of this love and joy in your life to mm -hmm. where, to where other people will start seeing a difference in you. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And I think it's always good to ask for constructive help, you know, even therapy, coaching, you know, you know, talking to your pastor. These are all good methods of, you know, getting an unbiased opinion. You know, it's always good mm -hmm. to get an unbiased opinion and be able to reach out to others and ask others for constructive criticism and to be able to take that constructive criticism in, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes people don't like to hear when they're wrong. But sometimes it, it, it helps, you know, because, you know, if we are doing something wrong, then we could easily fix it and make it better. But we have to, you know, nobody likes to hear that we're we're not doing something good or the right way. But it's also good to hear that. And it's good to hear it from someone that's been through it or is above your level. You know, they mm -hmm. know they've gone through it. They've been through it. They understand where you're coming from and they can give you advice when they were in your shoes and how they mm -hmm. got through it. Yeah, that's, that's it. Exactly. I mean, just like, you know, you've heard my testimony a bunch of times, you know, about how I overcame cancer with mm -hmm. God and for people that haven't been through cancer, if one of their friends is going through it, they don't understand what goes in your mindset. Yeah. And I mean, you, you've been through it. So, you know, so you under, understand. And, but somebody that is being through the same thing, they are, they are more, I think they're more loving toward that person versus somebody that has a friend that they have no idea what they're going through. Right. And I think maybe that has a lot to do you know, with how we react to different things. And, you know, even though we might not understand what a person is going through, we still need to show them love and understanding. You know, maybe say, I've never been through, I'll just use cancer. I've never been through cancer. I don't know what you're going through, but, you know, I'm here for you. You know, if you need to talk about anything, you know, yeah. I'm up to talking, you know, just something, just something like that. Right. And even with that, that will help your mindset as right. well mm -hmm. as your heart and your well-being. Right. Because with 
when we're understanding and loving toward another person, yeah, whether it's our family, a friend, or even even a stranger, right? You know, and I've got a neighbor, and you know, she'll go to Dollar General and she'll come back and she'll tell me, "Oh, I ran into this person. I mean, a stranger," <laughs> and we, she never meets a stranger, mm-hmm. and. We had this great conversation and she will tell me all about her troubles, what she is going through. And, you know, and she'll tell me, she said, yeah, said, said, I gave her, you know, $20. That's all I had in my wallet. And I told her and and we sat there and prayed for her um, situation, you know, for a few minutes, you know, and then we went on and finished our shopping. It's just little stuff like that. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be big stuff. No. Just little stuff. Just little and stuff. If all of us can just start doing little stuff, we could get this more people to, you know, like um, I forget the the phrase now, but where you do something good to a person and then that person passes it on to the next person. Right, right. Mm-hmm. And you know, if we could all just start doing that, I mean, we could make our, you know, our city or county or, you know, yeah. our uh, country, you know, move, start moving in a better, you know, direction. Mm-hmm. I mean, we might not get them, get everyone doing it, but at least we could get a part right. of our country moving in a better direction. Right. Exactly. Exactly. I remember one time I just said this woman was walking by me in a store and she had a purple shirt on and it was pretty. And I told her, oh, what a pretty shirt. And her face just lit up and this big (laughs) smile came on her face. And it was just it looked like I made her day just by commenting Mm -hmm. her shirt. You know, just something little, you know, like lots of, believe it or not, lots of people don't get compliments, even from the people around them that they see on a daily basis. And they probably get the least amount of compliments from the people they see all the time because we we tend to take the people we love for granted after a while. So, Mm -hmm. you know, it's, you know, it's nice to be able to just stop sometimes stop and and do something nice, the show, the show that you appreciate and, and love or respect the people around you. And even like an example of, you know, write in a letter, like a short letter and just say, this is why I respect you. This is why I, um, you know, this is, this is why you mean so much to me, you know, or this is why Mm -hmm. I appreciate you. And then just put it in a little envelope and just leaving it for them, you know, and, Mm -hmm. you know, sometimes people just, you know, want to be acknowledged, you know, they, they don't, they're not looking for, you know, a pat on the back, but sometimes, you know, for the things they do when, when they're acknowledged, you know, it makes a person feel better. Like, yeah, I'm, you know, I, the person realizes that I'm going out of my way to help them and it makes the other person feel good that they, they acknowledge it, you know, and Mm -hmm. and sometimes if we could take time to do little things like that, you know, I think it goes a long way. Yes. I mean, like you were talking about that lady smile, I mean, just little things can make people's day. I mean, just smiling at them in the grocery store, they might not feel like smiling, but if you smile at them, most of the time, people (laughs) will smile back at you if you smile at them. Yes, they will. They will. Yeah. And, you know, it's just a little effort. You know, I I say do at least one, one, one nice thing for somebody each day. You know, that's all it Mm -hmm. takes. Just one little thing, you know, and it could even be a text to somebody. You can send someone a little text with something really nice in the text, you know, mm-hmm. if you don't have time to pick up the phone and call them, maybe with a little, little fun emoji that make to, will make them smile, you know, or, you know, if you have time to call them to say hello, you know, for a few mm-hmm. minutes, you know, little things, you know, can, can mean a lot for a person, you know, or just even stopping by for a few minutes just to say hello to somebody you know, the littlest things can, can go a long way. And, and I think the biggest thing that we, we started the conversation with is is let's think before we talk and let's, let's really, um, you know, before we just come out and say things to other people, why don't we think about, you know, is this the way I want someone to speak to me, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and, you know, 
that will answer your question right there. You know, when people, you know, sometimes I, I see people speak to other people and it's so disrespectful and it's like, you know, well, they wouldn't want someone speaking to them like that. Why are they doing it to somebody else? You know, mm -hmm. and, you know, I think people need to think about that. And, and then, like we said, you know, think about how it affects the other person. They may not think that it affects the other person, but I guarantee it does, you know, and like we mentioned, you know, most people have like mental health issues, you know, because of events that happened in their childhood years or while they were growing up, you know, and, and people, so many people I've spoken to, like I said earlier, they go back and they talk about their childhood, like it was around the corner and they just remember specific things that happened to them, either in grade school or something and they they haven't forgotten because it hurt them so just you know when you think about how little things just stick with you you know in our our current lives let, let's take time out to try to be nice to people around us that we see you know and if we if someone upsets us let's take a deep breath before we think of something to say back or not say anything at all at all sometimes you don't have to so let sometimes less is better you know but if you are going to say something back Take a deep breath, think about it, and then respond in a polite way because it always makes you the better person. You know, mm -hmm. not you're not getting anything by trying to if they if they stab you in the back by saying something really crude, by you doing the same thing, it makes you less of a person. So then mm -hmm. let's think about, you know, how could I be better than them? You know, and then, you know, and sometimes by responding in a nice way, you really make the other person feel like crap, you know, <laughs> so it's better just to say nicer in that sense. You know, you actually get, you, you get your money's worth if you, if you are nicer when somebody sometimes is not so nice to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm laughing because yeah, I have done that before, you know, people are, you know, saying bad things, trying to cut you down, and then you turn around, you know, and say something nice, and don't go the direction they're going, and I've had people just look at me before, like, wow, you know, she didn't come back at me with that, and so, you know, you know, growing up, we um heard kill a person with kindness, Mm -hmm. which is basically what we're talking about here. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, people don't think that you can be kind to somebody and be a better person. They think, you know, maybe like you said, you know, you need to talk bad, you know, try to get the other person, you know. And but and when people show kindness, they don't know what to think. I mean, they're just shocked. And yeah. You know, it's just like, what just happened? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it's, it's so true. It's so true. I, I think that's the, that's the best medicine that, you know, that you could give somebody is, is a, a, a dash of kindness, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, it works better than being mean and going right back at the person. It sometimes it is just really, I think, giving a dash of kindness back a teaspoon of kindness is actually going to be more, more hurtful and make that person feel more stupid. You know, because <laughs> you realize that they were the ones that were 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 being not so so smart in the situation, or not so nice, or just being stupid themselves. You know. Mm -hmm. Now, but if you had to take this whole conversation today and you had to emphasize on a couple of things, what are some things that you really want the listeners to understand from your your conversation that you were having with them today? Well, the first thing, like we talked about in the beginning is to think before you speak. And the second thing, like we ended with, is, you know, show, show people kindness. Don't go back at somebody that's being mean to you just because they're being mean. Right. Come back with them with kindness and let them see that there is a difference in kindness versus being mean. Right. And on top of all of that, you know, search down in your heart and your soul and make sure that like in my book, make sure your heart is pure 
but not only make sure it is pure, but make sure that there is no negativity or no bitterness anywhere in your heart. Yes. And where can people find your book? It's on every online bookstore and also in Canada at Chapters. And they can go straight to my website and there's a uh, link on my website that will take them directly to Amazon to buy any one of my books that they want. And my website is debbieadamsbooks.biz, B-I-Z. I I love it. This has been an amazing conversation. I'm so glad that you wanted to talk about this topic today because I think it's so well needed. You know, in our society today, I think maybe we brought some awareness to people to make, you know, let them think about with all the hate that's going on, nobody likes the hate because people talk about it. You know, they, they talk about how things are, everything seems like it's going backwards instead of forward. And, you know, so if it is going backwards, which it is, let's make a change. And all we have to do mm-hmm. is make little changes and we could start with respect, kind words, some love and gratitude and just little things each day, just add it, you know, just showing some little things like we just mentioned and let, let's let start the change and let, let's, let's, you know, everybody work together as a, as a whole universe and let's show some, some love to, you know, to each other. Let's be kind to each other. And, you know, and hopefully a snowball effect will happen. You know, it, it's, you know, you, you get much more in life when you're happy than when mm-hmm. you're, when you're, when you're angry and hateful, you know, it's, it, there's, it, there's life is, is very somber when you have to go through life with, with anger and hate in your heart. You know, if you go through life with joy and you, and happiness, you know, there's so much in this world to experience and to, and to, and to be able to love and to show love is, is huge, you know, and it's never too late to learn to love and, and to show love. You know, sometimes people mm-hmm. live their whole life not knowing how to do it because they never were taught, but it's never too late to learn. And maybe just by showing a little kindness in your words, that could be the beginning, you know, to a whole new way of, of living. So mm-hmm. you know, I thank you so much for bringing this conversation to light. And I thank you so much for your your words of wisdom. Well, thank you for having me on your show. Uh, I enjoyed it. <laughs> you're very welcome. Thank you. And I look forward to talking to you soon. Have a great day. Thank you.